So after my Amazon Echo breakup video, I got a lot of messages that came in two flavors. One was people that said, what did you expect? They all listened in. What? Well, we did mention that in the last video. I know, right? That's, that's how they all work. Well, the other flavor of response was, I'd never let one of those into my house because they're just spy devices. Oh, no thanks, I'm all good. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry, did you want that? Well, so from the most extreme responses on both sides, I'm an idiot. And based on that, I'd have to agree. But this idiot has some thoughts on how to secure your voice assistant experience, so let's dive into it. But before we do, take a moment and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. We're Matt Farrell, welcome to Undecided. In the breakup video, I was focused on how Amazon, Google, and Apple anonymize and protect the data that they collect on us, or <laughs> in some cases, don't anonymize and protect it from prying eyes within their respective companies. Well, if you're a smart speaker user, there are some things that you can do to tighten up that security yourself and take back some control of the data. So regardless of which smart speaker you've invited into your home, let's run through some of the things that you can do. first tip, which is going to seem obvious, is mute the microphone on the speaker when you're not using it. This does make them not as convenient to use, but it's a good way to ensure that the speaker isn't accidentally waking up and transmitting recordings to a company's server. All of these speakers have some way to mute them, whether it's a physical button, switch, or even just a software setting. For Amazon Echo speakers, there's a mute button on top of the device. For Google devices like the Mini or Home Hub, it's a small switch on the back. And for the HomePod, you just have to say the trigger word and stop listening. Stop listening. Just to confirm, would you like me to turn off Siri? Yes. Okay, I've turned off Siri. When the HomePod is muted, you can always press and hold the top of the HomePod to activate Siri temporarily, or turn it back on completely by saying the trigger word, start listening while pressing the top. Second is to turn on the notification sounds. This will play a sound anytime the speaker thinks a trigger word has been said, which means the speaker is actively listening and transmitting what it's hearing. Having an audible sound is a good way to know what the speaker is doing, even if it's out of sight. By default, Amazon has this shut off, but you can turn it on in the settings. Go to device settings, and then tap onto a specific speaker, tap on sounds, and on the bottom of the screen, you'll see request sounds. Turn on start of request, you can also turn on end request for when the speaker stops listening. For Google, open the Google Home app and scroll down until you find the device you would like to control. Tap on it and then in the top right corner of the device card, tap settings. Scroll down to device info, tap accessibility, and then turn on the toggle next to play start sound. On the HomePod, you launch the Home app and tap the rooms tab. Swipe to the room that contains your HomePod and long press on it. Tap settings then toggle the sound when using Siri. Third, for Amazon, you can opt out of analytics or data improvement options, which is supposed to keep your recordings from being used to improve Alexa. In Alexa privacy, you can find this in manage how your data improves Alexa. If you opt out of the help develop new features, it prevents your recorded snippets from getting used by the human reviewers I talked about in my Echo breakup video. While you're in here, I'd suggest taking a look at the use messages to improve transcriptions and turning that off as well. Turning these off may affect some of the newest features, but it's a small price to pay to lock down your account just a little bit and limit who has access to the data. You can do the same thing with Google in the My Activity section. Tap on the Web and App Activity pencil icon. In here, you can control what Google tracking features you want on or off. Tap Show All Activity Controls at the bottom of the screen and then scroll to Voice and Audio Activity. This doesn't delete the data that Google has, but it stops it from collecting it going forward. Be sure to take a look through this entire section though, because there may be other settings you'd like to toggle on or off. So if you've done the first two or three, you're limiting those accidental recordings and preventing your data from getting sent to human reviewers, but a good spring cleaning may be warranted. 
So for the fourth tip, you may want to scrub things clean and delete your data. For Amazon Alexa, you can get to this through the settings and history. You can see all of the requests you've made or it thought you made <laughs> and delete individual records or the whole group. It can be kind of fun and a little creepy to listen to some of the recordings and hear yourself asking for things like the weather. Turn on the Apple TV. To delete all of the recordings, you'll want to go into the Alexa privacy instead of the history section. Tap into review voice history and select the date range you want. It could be for any time span you like, but to delete everything, make sure you select all history and then just tap delete all recordings. You can do the same exact thing for your smart home device data too. Amazon keeps a log of all of the connected devices activity. So tap into this section and hit the delete smart home devices history button. Google also gives you the option to delete by date ranges or even topic. Go into the Google Home app and go into settings, tap on my activity, and then tap on the three dots in the top search bar. Select delete activity by, and in here you can select by date range or all time, and then tap the delete link. But Google just rolled out some amazing new privacy features at Google I.O. last week. I have to tip my hat to Google for their new privacy features in the upcoming Android Q, which are very similar to Apple in a lot of ways. Much more is happening on device instead of in the cloud. But for Google Assistant specifically, they've already launched an auto delete feature. Under My Activity, tap Choose to Delete Automatically. And here you can set it to auto delete after three months or 18 months. This new feature is a great addition. For Apple, it's a little less of a concern since the voice recordings are anonymized and encrypted and a lot of the data is only on your local device. But you can do it too. It's just a little odd how you have to do it. You can't browse the recordings like you can on Amazon or Google or selectively delete them, but you can wipe out whatever's on the server. To delete them, go to your iPhone or iPad settings app. Turn off Siri in the settings, then look in general, then keyboard, and then turn off enable dictation. This will erase the files on Apple servers. Those are some of the basic ways to tighten up your security around your smart speakers or to scrub things clean. But there's also a couple of odds and ends that are good to keep in mind. Limit the number of third-party services that have access to your account. Again, for Amazon in the same Alexa privacy section, tap into manage skill permissions. You can check which Amazon skills have access to certain aspects of your account. If there are skills that you added to your Amazon Alexa account and you're not using them, delete and unlink them from your account. With Alexa, you can manage that under the skill section of the app. For Google Home, you can see what you have linked under your settings and services tab. Some speakers offer things like the ability to make a purchase just by asking for something, like on the Amazon Echo, or to drop in and start talking to someone without them needing to answer, or to send text messages through your phone. Now, while some of those are convenient, they come at a cost of security and privacy. You can have convenience or security, but you can't have both. If you have those enabled, anyone in your home can send a text message from your phone just by speaking to your smart speaker. Not sure that's worth it. And for Amazon, make sure you have a pin enabled for purchases. You can do this in the app's settings screen again. Tap into Alexa account and then voice purchasing. In here, you can enable a four digit pin code for purchasing, or better yet, just turn off the feature completely. As a big of a fan of smart speakers as I am, we all need to be careful in how we use them and how we have them configured. It doesn't matter what platform you like or use in your home, but we all need to do our homework and understand how they function. We need to know what features might be opening us up to abuse, even if it's just a family member playing a prank on us by ordering a dozen packages of paper towels from your Amazon Echo. It all comes down to what features are must-haves for you. Carefully evaluate what you really want to use and turn off the rest. So what do you think? Have you locked down your smart speakers or do you just love using those extra features too much? Add a comment below, I'd love to hear what you think. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends because it really helps the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel more, there are some ways that you can do so. Want some cool t-shirts like the one I'm wearing? Check out my SFSF shop for some cool Tesla, SpaceX, Science, and Undecided t-shirts. Every purchase helps to support the channel. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. It really does make these videos possible. And if you're interested in early access to videos, behind the scenes posts and polls, check out my Patreon page for some additional details. And I hope to see some of you over there. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.